This morning's Breakfast Bible Bite is from Psalm 72 in verses 15 and 16, which speaks of Solomon's kingdom and Christ's reign. Verse 15 of 72 reads, So may he live and may the gold of Sheba be given to him, and let them pray for him continually. Let them bless him all day long. The passage, which reads, So may he live, seems to reflect a double entendre, since the first part of the passage most probably addresses Solomon's future by his father David. But in addition, it may also be prophetic concerning the coming Messiah. We read in 2 Timothy 1.10, This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The longing of the continuance of his kingdom of righteousness is the desire of the people who continue to enjoy his protection and are being saved by him. The gold of Sheba reflects a token of gratitude and an act of submission. These are coronation gifts of the richest kind presented to Solomon, as well as in our own day when we offer our golden praise and worship that is cheerfully presented at the throne of Christ. Even today, we we pray for his kingdom to come, don't we? I, I I don't mean for Jesus personally, for he is already blessed and seated with the Father, but for the success of his future reign in Jerusalem and for the extension of his kingdom throughout the remotest parts of the world. We do this whenever we pray the words found in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, looking forward to a future day. However, depending on your translation, verse 72 and verse 15 may may also be read as we pray through him, which would still be correct, for it is by Christ as our mediator that prayers enter the realm of heaven, where he is an advocate on our behalf. Verse 16 of 72 reads, May there be an abundance of grain on the earth, on top of the mountains. Its fruit will wave like the cedars of Lebanon, and may those from the city flourish with the veg- like, like vegetation of the earth. There are several possible interpretations for this passage, but all lead to the same ending. The word abundance in earlier manuscripts is interpreted as a handful of grain. If we stay with that word picture and couple it with the phrase, in the earth on top of the mountain, it presents a hyperbole that paints a very clear picture of unique abundance. If only a handful of grain, red as seeds, were sown on the top of a mountain as a place least likely to produce anything at all due to its barren and unproductive nature, coupled with their fruitless temperatures. Yet, during Christ's reign and tenure in Jerusalem, even untillable land will produce an abundant harvest. During the millennial kingdom on earth, there will be an ample supply of fruits and food. Where righteousness and justice are the norm, industry and prosperity will flourish everywhere, from the rural mountains to the large cities. The reign of the Messiah on this earth will be a time of peace and prosperity and plenty. Apparently, yeah, all, the, the, apparently the passage could be uh, a prophetic word picture about the millennial church during the uh, time period beginning after the devastation of the tribulation, when the living seed of Christ will multiply over the whole earth. This is an image designed to show that the growth would be strong and abundant even under the most trying conditions. The true church is made up of spirit-filled believers, and today it is small small in number when compared to the population of the earth, but that small handful will produce an abundance of redeemed souls. Right now, the church may appear to be in a state of diminishment, and we are told that this will happen in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. It reads, Don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there's a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. Christ's spirit through Luke has an apt response. Chapter 12 and verse 32 says, So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Here's the question to ask yourself. Do you really have the faith to trust the father of our adoption 
to protect and provide for those of, that are his adoptees.